whenever I have a strong light source in the footage, I like adding some glow to it in post to make it more natural as this is how my eyes see it. So when you add the tinted aperture, the aperture does that for you by itself, so no need for post. I think it's a much, much more natural look to it. Plus it has the collar. One of my favorite aspects of this mod is how the flare line turns out. Because the Mir 10A already has some amazing flares by itself, and the streak flares that come from, from the line blend really well with that and give the whole thing a very organic look. here for another anamorphic tutorial and it seems I have started the series with the lenses that had the most amount of steps for modding and now I'm on the other end of the spectrum and I'm also expanding our wide angle capabilities by adding a 28 mil to the set and allowing you to replace that Pentacon 29 which isn't really Soviet. Uh, I'm also going lighter on the mod steps because I learned from trial and error that not all lenses benefit from a lot of internal painting. For this Mir 10A, I'm only adding a tinted oval aperture and a flare line. To do that, we're gonna need these items. A Mir 10A, a lens wrench, and a small screwdriver, oval aperture disc, sandpaper, scissors, black and orange Sharpie, fishing line, double-sided tape, 3D printed focus gears, and rotating M42 adapter. You can get the files for some of these items in the video description below, and I'm also selling the oval apertures and the focus gears, so the links are also in the description. Start by focusing the lens to infinity in order to push the rear of it as far out of the housing as possible. Now, use the lens wrench to remove the inner locking ring. This will give you access to a glass element with a metal frame around it. Welcome to the annoying part of this mod. Using the lens wrench, patiently fish it out of the housing, carefully noting which side faces outwards. Now we got another of those elements. The key to get them out is to keep both sides even. If they start to angle to each other, the element will get stuck. After that is taken care of, also remember which side faces outwards. I like to keep the outwards facing side facing up on the table. We have finally reached the aperture mechanism. I'm being creative here and using the same aperture disc I made for the Mir 1B since the physical maximum aperture size is about the same. Send it super thin as there's not much space in there, paint it as desire, and here's a new trick. Instead of painting the whole thing in one color, I'm adding a lot of black around the edges and the orange comes in closer to the oval. This will control highlight blooming. Add the flare line by using double-sided tape and slot this aperture disc in the lens and make sure the oval is right in the middle. This will turn the original f3.5 into f5. Carefully put the lens elements back in one by one and lock them in place with the ring. Slide the focus gear on and align the ovals and flares by using the rotating M42 adapter. And now you're done!
The ovals are very subtle in general, but I don't want them to be like popping up all the time. I just want a hint that there's something anamorphic going on. And then when you go for a wide close up, then they really show up in the background. And that's so pretty. If you want to grab a Mir 10A right away to start modding, uh, you can get it from the links in the video description right below. There's also links to everything I used in this process. So if you can get something from me, do it as you help me out growing this channel. If you have any questions, please shoot them in the comments below and hit the like button for this video. Next week, I'm wrapping the entire set with the Mir 20M at 20 millimeters. So subscribe to be notified when the video's up. I'm Chitu Fahadangs and I'll see you then.